Hello, everyone. My name is Ban Fei, a PhD candidate from the University of Hong Kong. Today, I'm going to present one of my published work, which is to use the phase field method to simulate the shear fracture problem in the jaw materials. As we know, the shear fracture is very common in the geological materials. The well-known example include the geological fold in the rock mass and the steep surface in the soil slope. And this shear fracture has uh, some important features. For example, they can grow under compressive loading and uh, this shear fracture usually contains the frictional contact. And the third feature is that during the fracturing process, the material usually experience the pressure dependent strength. So to consider these features in the shear fracture modeling, here we utilize the innovative method, which is called the phase view method to simulate the geological shear fracture. So we first introduced how the phase view method represents the crack. Traditionally, people will represent the crack by the discrete representation. And the crack topology for this discrete representation is just like the delta function. However, the phase field method represents the discrete crack into a diffusive region by introducing the phase field, length, uh, phase field variable called D. And on the right, as you can see, the crack topology has also been smeared into the region with the finite weights. And this width is determined by the phase field length parameter, which is denoted by L here. So to simulate the geological shear fracture using the phase field method, I like to introduce some important governing equations here. The first is the well-known momentum balance equations in the quasi-static state. To consider the frictional contact inside the frictional crack, um, here we use the special stress calculation following my previous paper published in IGNME. Basically, it calculates the stress tensor in the interpolation form by using the degradation function, which is the special function in the phase field method. While the box stress tensor can be directly calculated according to the linear elasticity, the calculation of this interface stress tensor is a bit more complex. And in this study, we calculate this interface stress tensor according to the thick and slip condition of the contact surface. And here in this work, we will also consider the propagation of the, of the shear fracture. So we need to solve another equation, which is called the phase field evolution equation. And there are some important components inside this phase field evolution equation. The first component is called the crack driving force. And the second component is the crack density function, which is represented by this gamma d here. The purpose to introduce this crack density function is to approximate the crack surface integral by using the volume integral. And here we choose the crack density function that is used in boarding at all. Then the problem, the remaining problem to finalize the phase field evolution equation is how can we evaluate crack driving force? To answer these questions here, uh, I like to introduce the Palmer and Rice model because I like to incorporate this Palmer and Rice model into my phase field formulation. The Palmer and Rice model is originally designed for the progressive failure of steep clays based on the fracture mechanics principle. Basically, it describes the sliding slip surface with the friction and it calculates the J integral at the point P on the slip surface. And the Palmer and Rice model claims that the area bounded by the shear stress curve and the residual shear strength is equal to the J integral minus the frictional dissipation. And they further claim that this value is equal to the shear fracture energy. Basically, uh, this idea can be interpreted by an energy balance formulation, which indicates that the fracture dissipation is balanced by the difference between the energy released and the frictional dissipation. And we further notice that actually this difference is just like the crack driving force. So based on this observation, we can calculate the crack driving force in our phase field formulation by taking the derivatives of the string energy and the frictional dissipation. 
The detailed formulation of the correct driving force is shown on the screen. And here, the HT represents the correct driving force at the peak stress state, which is related to the peak shear strength tau P and the residual shear strength tau R. And to consider the pressure dependent strength of the materials, here we consider both tau P and tau R as the function of the contact normal stress Pn. The remaining challenge to finalize this phase two formulation is to consider the lensing sensitivity. The motivation behind this introduction of the lens insensitivity is because the previous phase field model of the geological shear fracture is originally designed for the brittle materials. And according to their formulations, the material strengths are actually sensitive to the phase field length parameter L. And so in their studies, they will consider this lens parameter as a material parameter. However, as we know, the dual materials are quasi brittle, and both peak shear strength and the residual shear strength of the dual materials can be directly measured from the laboratory work. It means that this, this strength of the dual materials should not be dependent of any lens parameter. Therefore, I consider this lens parameter as a pure modeling parameter in my form formulation. To ensure this lensing sensitivity, here I refer to Wu and Gilliam for the phase field model of the cohesive tensile cracks and modify the degradation function, which takes the form as shown on the screen. So now I have introduced the, the formulation of the phase field modeling of the geological shear fracture. And I like to use some representative numerical examples to verify my formulation. The first example shows the lung shear apparatus with the initial crack on the left under a simple shear loading. The material parameters chosen for this example is like the stiff clay. And here for this simulation, I like to show how the phase field crack can grow under the loading and whether the results are consistent with the permanent rise model and check whether the, whether the results are less insensitive. So first, I will show how the shear fracture can grow and propagate in this deep clay specimen and how the force displacement curve develops. Basically, the materials experience the elastic deformation before reaching the peak stress state. And after that, it experienced a softening process before it reach, reaching the residual shear stress. And on the right, as you can see, the residual shear strength produced by our model is also correctly obtained by comparing with the theoretical value, which is represented by the dashed line. And in this slide, I will further verify my formulations from two aspects. The first aspect is that I calculate the theoretical fracture dissipation for this problem, which is around 14.7 joule. And I also calculate this area below the shear stress curve, which is also around 14.7 joule. So this result indicates that my formulation satisfied the permanent rise model. And on the right, I choose three different phase field length parameters. And as you can see, the results are almost the same. So it also indicates that the model and the results are length insensitive. For the second example, I simulate a biological compression on the stiff clay materials. To initiate the shear band in this specimen, I have introduced a weak zone inside the materials. And the purpose to simulate this problem is I would like to demonstrate that my model can simulate the shear band under compression. And the results are also pressure dependent and length insensitive. So now I would like to show how the shear band can initiate and grow inside this specimen and how the force displacement curve will develop under the compressive loading. And then I have simulated the same problem under three different confining pressure. And as you can see, the result shows the pressure dependence and they are also length insensitive. And as the final example, I simulate the field skill problem of the slope failure the setup of this problem is originally designed by the Reguero and Boha. So I also use the same material parameters from their studies. And for this simulation problem, I like to show how our phase field model can simulate the steep surface under compression. 
and how the model can simulate a few skill problem. And at the end, I will also compare my result with the reference results to demonstrate the accuracy of my model. So at first, I would like to show the sleep surface development inside this slow problem and the force displacement curve. As you can see, the result demonstrate that my model can simulate this few skill problem very well. And also, I compared my result with the result from the Regrero and Boha using the plasticity and the assumed enhanced screen method. As you can see, our result coincide very well, which demonstrate that my model is very accurate. So to summarize my presentation, I developed a new phase view model of the geological shear fracture, which can simulate the shear fracture growth under compressive loading, and it considered the frictional contact, pressure dependent strength, and length insensitive material behaviors. And I have also confirmed that the formulation are consistent with the polymerized model. And all these points have been verified by the numerical examples. And you can also refer to my paper in CMAME for more details. Also, this work can be further extended to consider the fluid injection and the dynamic effect. And at the end, I would like to thank you the financial support for this work. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.